In our last video, we um, cleaned and basically restored the old IBM PS2 8530. Today we're going to replace the clock battery and maybe do a few more other things. Let's see what happens. Earlier today I have prepared a replacement battery. This is a CR2016 that has been modified with leads and shrink wrapped with shrink tubing for ultimate uh, shrink rapidness and protection. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, we have to desolder the old Panasonic lithium battery. It's a simple uh, three joint, uh, three solder joints and have to be undone. I'm warming up my iron right now. And uh, once we have the battery liberated, and I've already taken, taken the liberty of marking the positive side, so that way we don't forget. Um, I'm going to take our little handy soldering iron and some desoldering braid. There it is. And uh, that's, uh, what we're going to do is basically just desolder the sucker as best we can. Once we clean the holes and we can see if the kind of clearance we have, we're going to clean the holes by taking the solder iron tip and just stick it into the hole with the braid in between, just like that. And I'm just going to wick up any uh, extra solder. Okay, our battery is now hooked up and energized to the board. We're just going to lay down some fresh solder. And we're going to be done. Get that nice and hot. Okay. All right. That, my friends, is a uh, is a done deal. It's a little long. I should actually pull these up and trim them. I'm going to do just that. It's a little bit long, but. So you can actually trim it off. I don't have my side cutters here, but let's use these nice sharp scissors. And just trim the excess a little bit. It's not perfect, but it'll do. I actually should um, verify that uh, these positive leaves are. No, I think I think we're fine. I think we're okay. But I see two different holes for positive. And I'm wondering if there's a layer. I don't know how many layers this board has. I think it's two layers, top and bottom. But if there's one in the middle, we need to make sure that gets connected one way or the other. So um, I have my handy multimeter here, which is going to help us verify that they are, in fact, linked internally, if needed. And uh, we're just going to tone these two out. Okay, we're good. Okay. Just wanted to make sure, because you never know. And I'm going to coil the battery up. I could have shaved the legs down, but it would be the fun in that. I, I meant to do that, actually. We're just going to mount it to the surface of the board with zip tie. We're going to take a zip tie and wrap it around here like that. There we go. I found some Velcro in my uh, little storage bin that I forgot I had. So, 
Hooray for that. Um, we're just going to pop this back in. And the board should now be energized. The time is 11.25 p.m. Now that's uh, 23.25 in military time. Let's see. 23.25 zero, zero. Just like that. Now we're going to, all right, now let's see what happens if we shut it off. All right, here we are. Isn't she lovely? That didn't work. Just like it's Big Brother, the PS2, Model 55, Model 80, etc., the Model 30 also requires a setup disk in order to get it configured after the clock battery has been replaced. Unfortunately, it's not as simple as popping in a new battery and moving on with your life. It, you have to run that utility first um, in order to get it to um, set all the system parameters and save them to memory. Um, turns out the original battery was not dead. It was 25 years old and it was not dead but I replaced it anyway. Um, not because I was afraid of it leaking, because those Panasonic batteries never leak. Um, but I was afraid of it um, failing at a point when I couldn't fix it again. Like, for example, if the reference diskettes became unavailable, um, then it would be pretty much irreparable. So what I did is I, uh, I downloaded the disk image for the PS2 Model 30, um, now, the disk image is available from walshcomputing.com, I believe it is. Um, let's take a look. The actual website is walshcomptech.com, and they have reference disks for every single IBM PS2 ever built. The problem is, these won't be there forever, so if you're into the IBM PS2 line, or if you're considering doing it, I would recommend downloading all of the disk images and saving them in a, in a, in a safe place because eventually they won't be available. You can also download the um, there's a DOS version of the uh, um, what's it called? Win Win image? Hold on, let me open that up here. Uh, here it is. RawWrite.exe There's a DOS version of RawWrite um, on this website that you can download yourself and, and use as long as you're running a, um, a Windows machine. Now because we're working with 720k diskettes which can be identified by the lack of a HD logo here, uh, we have to format that 720k diskette in Windows. It's, um, it is pot in Windows XP. It is possible in Windows XP and I believe Windows 7 using a DOS command. I'm going to show you that command right now. It cannot format a 720k diskette. So it gives us a bit of a problem. Now it looks like I have bad sectors on this disk, so we're going to get another one. There is a workaround to formatting a 720k, and that is to run the following command. It's, a, it's actually on a tech article. Um, but it is format a colon forward slash t80 slash n9 just as you see it. Once the disk is formatted you can extract the disk image using raw write to the floppy disk and it becomes basically a duplicate of the factory diskette and is now bootable. So once you do that <clears throat> now the PS2 model 308086 is the only PS2 in the line well, and I believe the 25, which is the all-in one, is the only uh, line of the PS2 series, or machine, that features a 720k floppy drive. And once again, as I mentioned in an earlier video, you can identify the drive's capacity simply by the button. The 720k can be either a big button or a small button, um, but it's noted by a lack of any writing on the button. As you see here, there's nothing. Since I happen to have a Model 80 sitting here too, an 8580-311, 
you'll notice that the 1.44 meg floppy drive actually states the capacity on the button. And to make it even more interesting, the PS2 was also available with a 2.88 megabyte floppy drive, um, which didn't quite catch on in the industry. But now we're going to boot from the reference diskette, or the setup diskette, and we're going to take a look at what that looks like. The PS2 Model 80 that I have, I actually did replace the battery in that a couple years ago when I got it. Um, I expect it to fail in around 2019. The battery is good for about 10 years. But that battery um, caused the machine to be completely non-functional. On an IBM with the reference disk, without the reference disk that's been reset, or had a new battery installed, basically becomes um, practically unusable, especially if there's expansion cards installed. Like, for example, let's pretend this is a microchannel sound card. If the reference disk hasn't been loaded for that card, and the reference file, or the, we'll call it a driver to simplify things, if that has not been loaded, the card will never work. So, it's really difficult sometimes when you're dealing with these older systems. This is what the starter diskette looks like, and um, that's actually what they call it, starter diskette. And uh, system checkout, I'm not going to run this because it takes forever. This is a, um, a system diagnostic utility. It basically is for a quick uh, test of all system components. Format diskette, copy diskette, and prepare for moving. Prepare for moving is a drive parking utility, which is important when dealing with these older hard drives because those heads have to be parked in the landing zone when you're transporting the machine. Very important. Um, and you can also set the date and time. Setting the date and time in DOS is not enough. You have to run the setup to get on this machine. Real pain in the neck, but you gotta do it. Um, so we're going to park the heads. I want to show you what that does. Okay, the heads have already been moved to the landing zone, and this machine is now safe for shipping. Pretty cool. Then you simply turn it off. There's a special portion of the disk that um, <clears throat> has no data written to it, and that's where it moves the heads to, so that it doesn't cause any data loss or disk damage. Um, this is no longer required because, believe it or not, hard disk drives still have to be landed properly. Um, notebook drives today, I believe, park the heads off the platters. Um, and what it does is it moves the heads off the platters and onto a set of ramps. Um, the drives that are used, um, I believe the three and a half inch desktop drives, don't do the unloading procedure, but they um, they do something similar to that. They move the heads either, I, think, I believe it's uh, towards the very center of the disc. Um, but anyway, so that's, that's that's how you replace the battery in one of these. Um, now, you, now you can do it yourself. I think I've left out, I haven't left anything out. Um, if, you, if you aren't clear on something that I did in this video, simply Google the answer or Google the question and, and it'll come up. Um, I had one bizarre problem where I couldn't get a 720k diskette to um, to format on my uh, my Tandy over there, which is under the desk there. Um, it wouldn't format it. It was giving me a a um, a false read protect or write protect error, and I could not figure it out. Um, and then I played with a switch in one of these discs, and it came to life. And strangest thing. I've, I've um. I'm a little flabbergasted by that one. So the next thing I'm going to do, and and uh, and we're going to actually, I'm not going to videotape myself doing this, but I'm going to put some software onto a couple of uh, 720k diskettes. I'm going to try to find a copy of Windows 2.0. I, I know I've had a few online or seen it there. And um, we're going to put Windows 2.0 on this. And we're going to put... Um, 
let's see, we'll put Windows 2, we'll put WordPerfect 5.1, we're going to put a bunch of games like Police Quest and a couple of other odds and ends and, and, and just have some fun. I need to uh, get the mouse driver moved on to a 720k disc and, um, and that'll be, uh, that'll have to be done, that's got to be, that's going to be fun. <laughs> So, all right, guys, uh, stay tuned, and there will be more coming. We're going to have some fun with this machine. Oh, and we still have to get our 8-bit sound card working. That's coming soon. Stay tuned. Well, I've got things uh, set up a little better now, so I can move and transfer data back and forth from there to there. Um, I've considered setting up a direct connection with a serial cable, but I don't have one long enough. Or a parallel cable, for that matter, or null modem cable, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, yeah. Actually, no, null modem is serial, I think. Ah, hell if I know. Anyway, um, it turns out this old compact flat screen monitor works pretty well. Uh, it's the right uh, aspect ratio for Windows uh, 3.1, running at uh, 640 by 480. Looks great. Um... One problem, I, I just discovered I only have one PS2 keyboard in the entire house. <laughs> as ridiculous as that sounds. Um, the last thing I did was I took the uh, my mouse driver that's on a uh, 1.44 meg disc and I moved it onto a 720 so I could put it on the uh, 8086 PS2. And I'm sharing one IBM Model M between the two keep, uh, computers. Excuse me. Um, so there it is. Yeah. Okay. We're getting somewhere. I'm looking more and more like a hoarder than, than I anticipated, but eh. 